is up, App Nation? It is Steve. Tweet. I can't even say my name. Steve P. Young. Welcome to our weekly YouTube live streams where we bring on a guest, break down what's working in the app space, and really take a look at your apps to help you grow your downloads and revenues. And I'm super excited to talk to this guest because we're going to talk all about how to utilize user research, what's the right questions, how to really take that feedback and incorporate into your app and then help you grow those revenues. So without further ado, she is the lead, the head of monetization and subscription at Together Labs, formerly InView, the company, if you don't know InView, the company behind the area Reese book, Lean Startup, the one that he started as well. They are the top two grossing social network in the app stores. It is togetherlabs.com if you want to check them out. But without further ado, she is, how to get the music going, Jenny Pollock. Hello. Thank you for having me, Steve. I'm going to have a cooler intro next week, but welcome to the show, Jenny. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. So glad to be here. I am always down to chat monetization and app. So this is going to be fun. Yeah, I want, here's the the website. And Jenny, you know, she we're going to be playing for girls in tech. And so the dad jokes, for those who are going to just donate anyways, go ahead and go donate. It is girlsintech.org. And the loser is going to donate $50. Regardless, we'll both probably donate. But yeah, that's what we're playing for. And then guys, just clean up too. I just, before I jumped on live stream, I lost last week, Jenny, I was telling you, and I had to do a salsa dance. So that is on the YouTube story. I may put it on Instagram later, but it is on the YouTube story right now. So if you want to check Fantastic. that out. Kind of I cannot wait to see that, Steve. I'm so no, excited. You don't want to see it. No, you <laughs> I do. I want to see it. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to say hi to a few people before I get rock and rolling. What's up, Kevin? Good to see you week in and week out. Kevin sent me some YouTube videos that he's been featured on. So good to see you here. Noah, what's up, man? And then we got Jeremiah. Yeah, I'm I need a keyboard keyboard Marco too. Okay, I don't know what that means. Yo, what's happening, dude? And then fam, what's up, Miguel? Fam is Fridays with App Masters. Okay, Jenny. So welcome to the fam. You're part of the fam. What's up, Patrick? Good to see you, man. All right, Jenny. So let's kick it off. You prepared this, so I'm gonna let you lead. Absolutely. So today we're gonna chat about using user research to increase the revenue of your app. First and foremost, we've got our Twitter handles down here. So feel free to yeah. live tweet. And of course, hashtag okay. at Masters. Yeah, like let's it. go to the next slide. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, do I click or do you click? There we go. Cool, no, cool. We're on the next slide, you can see it? I can now. All right, so I've got okay. a four step framework that I use and I've got some nice easy emojis here to help you remember. So the first thing that you want to do is just ask. So often we're like, what features should I build? Which is most important? Which one should we do first? How should the feature look? Guess what? If you have users or even if you don't have users yet, you have a target audience and they know what they want. So you want to make sure you take the time to do quantitative and qualitative research. So I'm talking about surveys, talking about user interviews, and really making sure as you do both of those, that you have clear research goals. So maybe you're looking for the next feature to build and you're like kind of torn between two. You can actually put those in and ask the audience, ask your users, do a user survey. You can use something like SurveyMonkey. You can use a free Google Forms. That's an option too. And then when you get those results, whether they like feature A or feature B, you can then go into doing some like confirming of that and making sure that you see the same data in the other type of research. So if you did a survey, you might want to follow up with user interviews. So that's something that I always recommend starting with. Just ask. Hey, Jenny, Next one. I want to... I want to interrupt a little bit. I hope you don't mind. Yeah. But what are the, I, I like to just ask, but what are the right questions to ask? And, in, you know, obviously we don't want to lead our users, but is there any intel that you can give? Like, hey, there's this, I would, I we always ask this one question and it gets great results. Yeah. So one of the questions that I always ask is the tenure of the user. So how long have they been playing, you know, on MView or how long have they been playing on your app? Because typically newer users have different needs 
than users who have been with you for a long time. So it depends what audience segment you're trying to support with the um, research. And then the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure the data is filterable. So if there's something that you know that you can filter by, maybe it's their location depending on your app, or maybe if you're a workout app, it's like how many you know people who work out three times a week. Those are our power users. Those are the people we want to reach. So definitely allow them to, you know, mark their tenure and mark the amount of time they think they're spending in the app. Those are really great places to start. And then just having those clear, crisp research goals. What are you trying to learn? Yeah, I like that. What do you typically, when you do a startup project, what are some like typical goals? Is it just like retention oriented? Is it monetize? We're talking about monetization too, but like, should we build the features? Because one of the things, and the reason why I'm asking Jenny is, you know, I work with one client. And I was like, hey, you know, I feel like this is an app that if we just stay around long enough, the the category of the app is going upwards, that will be just fine. And so, stop building new features. Like, you know, the app is really good, right? And so, but like, what are what are some of the if you're just starting out, what are some of the main goals you should be asking your users? What, you know, start from the goal and then let's go down to the ask. Part. Yeah, that's great. So if you're looking at the goal and you're saying what feature to build, and in this case that you mentioned, Steve, is maybe they don't need to build a feature. So you could be asking the users, what features do you want? And if there isn't a clear answer, or you can even ask what features do you like and have them stack rank, here are the top five features and then have them put it in order for you. And if you're finding that they're, you know, really liking the features that you have, if you're finding that they're not suggesting new things, if they're saying that the usability is good, you know, you might not need to right now. Maybe you need to spend some more time in marketing, right? Um, so it's really about whatever you're trying to learn and asking questions to get that data. So sometimes it's like, which monetization strategy should you use? So you'd ask, hey, would you do a, you know, $2.99 a month subscription for this feature. Walk them through the feature mm -hmm. and ask. And then they'll say yes or no. And that's really where the um, using user research with the interviews can be helpful. So you can actually have that back and forth, right? Start with a survey sometimes and then validate in a conversation. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Of course. That <laughs> so the next part, you'll get some research back, right? Let's say we've done our user research, we have some information, and you might think, hey, let's just go build it. The user said, wow, I would definitely pay $2.99 for this feature. And you know what? I don't care about anything else. I don't care about, you know, maybe microtransactions or, you know, any of that. They don't care. Um, you might go build it. But if you take that and you mesh it with your business goals, Maybe that's not what's right for the app. Maybe your business goals are something else. Maybe you really are trying to have um, multiple revenue streams. In that case, you would want to go build the microtransactions and the subscription, uh, which is always a good practice anyways. But I think it's really important to put your business goals in line with the user research you're getting. Otherwise, you'll just be building stuff that's not aligned with your business or your app's goals. I like it. Yeah. So then the next one is you want to like analytically think about it, but you also want to be creative. And this is where your expertise comes in as the app builder, as the app marketer, as anyone working on the app, you really need to decide, Hey, what is my expertise here? And is this correct? You want to check the science. You want to check your questions. And sometimes there's a creative solution that you didn't know about until you went through the research. Uh, so maybe you started this off and you're like, wow, we're definitely going to build this $2.99 subscription every month. And then maybe you find that people want one more feature and they're willing to pay $6.99. Um, so it's really just important to put your expertise in here and bake it in. Yeah, I love it. I know one of the things that it's been talked about with product market fit examples is like, what is the main benefit that you get from us or whatever the app right and it sort of leads to that one of my friends did that and he added it's like why are you here what are you here for you know and that was part of the onboarding and he then incorporated that it was like anxiety relief and stress which we all probably thought would be true because it's a meditation type of app breathing exercise and he incorporated that into his marketing copy and put in screenshots and he saw an increase in download so it's like using this to then use it on your paywalls on your mark marketing 
app store screenshots. That's, I, you know, like that's how you get, that's why user feedback is so valuable. Absolutely. And you just infuse it everywhere, like you were saying. And yeah. the other thing that we've seen is when we do this, you know, we were working on some creatives for a few of our subscription programs uh, on the MVU side of things. And when we put the value proposition, we put those features and benefits actually in the creative. So we'd either show the avatars doing it or, um, you know, have the avatars if they're shopping, you've got shopping bags and that kind of thing. Um, that's when it became really powerful. We're getting more clicks and we're seeing more engagement and, um, that's kind of where the fun is. So you get the information and then just stick it everywhere. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Cool. So the next one is then getting on the product roadmap. So cool. If you're the developer, you can just decide to do it. That's great. Um, one of the benefits of being lean and scrappy, uh, if you're in a bigger organization or even in a team, it can be tricky because you have to convince the other people that you are right and that you want to go this direction. And so it's always really important to make sure you get buy-in and kind of go on an internal PR tour, tell people, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what the research showed. This is what I'm excited about. And most of all, this is the opportunity. Here's what we can potentially do. Here's what the reward is. Let's go. And then once you get buy-in, it becomes a lot easier to move forward. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Do you have an cool. example? Jenny? Yeah. So we recently uh, tiered our VIP program. I guess it was about a year ago, actually, um, and brought it to mobile. It used to be a desktop only feature. And um, it's really cool. You get a bunch of different features. You can do uh, monthly credits. You can buy stuff in game. You get special gifts, special access, different media controls. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that comes with our VIP program. And after doing user research, I found that, hey, our users would love to have this available on mobile. So what we did was we tiered it. There's three price points now, $4.99, $10.99, and $19.99, uh, gold, diamond, and platinum level uh, accordingly. And with that, they're really um, excited to be able to have this on the go, to have this on their mobile phone. But we weren't sure in the beginning. And so we did went through this process. And I got buy-in from the product team and engineering team and our executive team. And we got it on the roadmap and got it out last November. I love it. You know, one of the yeah. things I like to do when I'm doing, uh, yeah, user research is I did this trick. This was written by me by back in 2012. And it still works today. Uh, part of what we did with our monetization was before I went all into apps, so we weren't even an app. But this is sort of like our normal pricing page, and I couldn't share details because of the company, right? Like, so I was like, oh, all these features. And then when we did user research, we knew that these were the two core features. And so I kind of messed around with the way I present some of this. You talking about the tiers got me thinking about this. And I we saw a, so when we added this versus this one, which is what we're used to seeing, when we did this, we saw a, I forget the exact number, 233% increase. And whereas nice. here we saw a 60 40 split where 60% were buying the monthly and then 40% were buying the yearly. This saw an 80, I think it was 89, 86% bought the yearly here and only 14%. And obviously nobody bought this. So it's like decoy pricing. Just have exactly. some tier that is just meant to make the other one look really cool. Well, and that's the thing. When I look at this graph, the yearly looks great. I'm getting, you know, a bunch of features that you don't get uh, in the other option. It's like, hey, let's go. Let's do it. Um, so I, I think that that's really cool uh, that you guys offered that and saw those results. And that would be aligned with my experience as well. Yeah. And I, it was all because, you know, we knew these, these were the two core features. So I was like, let's try and Jenny, you know, spoiler alert, if you bought anything, you got all of it. We just wanted to test it. I was like, let me just test it if it works first, and then we'll present it and then start building it. That's great to kind of go that way and have it be scrappy. And no one's ever going to be mad about more features. So the way that you got to market with that's really great. <laughs> the monthly people are like, hey, I got a deal here because I'm getting all these features for that monthly, even though I was supposed to. They probably, they probably messed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be happy about that. <laughs> All right, let's get into the product roadmap a little bit. 
Cool, cool. So one of the things that people often think is that wait for the product roadmap to be published and then decide your monetization strategy. What are they building? How can you make money? Yes, that is true. But I think there's a different way that we can do it. Can we hop to the next slide? Yeah. Cool. Should be more of a symbiotic relationship. They should be working together. They should feed each other. You really want to have the product roadmap influencing the monetization strategy like we talked about, but you also want the monetization strategy to influence the product roadmap. You want to be building things that you can monetize and, it, you know, you really need to have that close relationship. So if you're in a bigger organization that can take some more work at multiple levels of the org. However, if it's just you or a small team of people, you have a little bit more flexibility, but I encourage you to think about both sides of this coin. You really want to make sure that when you're building something, it's adding value and that there is a monetization strategy. Okay, so I wanted to share this comic uh, about the qualitative and quantitative methods. So quantitative is typically more numbers based. It would be like a survey, you'd get some information back, uh, you could kind of look at the data and segment it like we were talking about earlier. Qualitative is better for like a user interview, talking, having an actual conversation. So in this case, the uh, business model is free ice cream and you can see someone watching, only one in 30 take the free ice cream. So they've got the data coming in, maybe they're looking in Looker, Tableau, and they're like, no one's taking my ice cream. What is going on? Like, oh, it's free, why? Well, when they start talking to people, uh, what did you feel when you saw the free ice cream? Excited and a little scared. So it's like, oh, what is that? Like, why is it free? Uh, what's going on here? Um, so I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I would take a free ice cream that's unattended unless maybe it's one of those salt and straw seasonal flavors. They always have those fun, like Thanksgiving themed ones. And, you know, so maybe if it was really high value, I might, you know, risk it with the free ice cream cart. What do you think, Steve? Would you go for it? <laughs> it depends <laughs> who it's if it's wrapped up maybe but yeah i agree with you it's kind of like unless it's a brand that i know and trust like it's if it's just unintended it might i might pass on that one yeah absolutely it's a little concerning so that's why you want to do both if you don't people might be ignoring your free ice cream or whatever your app is uh, because they don't have the full picture and neither do you so it's really important to do both methods uh, sometimes it makes sense to start with qualitative and then quantitative and sometimes vice versa it just depends on the data you have and the data you're trying to get yeah i prefer qualitative qual yeah qualitative because i think you know, one of the things I like to stack all my calls and then I just do it on the fly. Like I'll say a certain thing. I'm like, oh, that really got a good response because I'm judging like just back. Right. I'm looking at your face. I'm kind of seeing if there's actually something interesting. You can't hide excitement if they go, oh, cool, cool versus, oh, wow, that's cool. You know, then I know I got something and I can just use it in my next call. So I just like to A-B test on the fly a lot of times. Absolutely. And one thing that got me thinking to touch on is that there's often rewards associated with user research. So, hey, do the survey, you could win a gift card. Hey, talk to me, we're gonna hook you up with a gift card for Amazon or whatever. Um, you wanna be careful not to offer too much and influence the users. Like you can absolutely offer something, but don't over inflate it because if you're giving them a lot of value like basically buying good answers that can happen on accident. So just try and make sure when you are rewarding users that you uh, don't have the level set too high. Mm, interesting. By yeah. the way, I did one of these user studies because I was interested in what questions they were going to ask me. I never got my Amazon card bench. Come on now. I still pay for you guys. Where's my Amazon <gasps> card? <laughs> Awful. They should hook you up. I feel like you should get two of them for this. I'm putting this on, I'm putting them on blast now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess that's a good point. Make sure you do, or if you say you're going to reward, make sure you do. <laughs> All right, let's hop to the next one. Unless there's any more user research questions you wanted to cover. No, I'll jump. All there. right. <laughs> Switching to, um, some stuff with user research here and a very old meme. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with none pizza left beef from back in the day. This meme turned 15 years old last week. Um, yeah, so it was right when Domino's 
made the choose your own toppings and you could pick what you wanted and you could get it sent to you. Um, you know, before you actually had to call in and it was a bit more involved than it is now. Um, I know with DoorDash and everything, it doesn't seem revolutionary, but at the time it was. And so somebody put in here, they wanted <laughs> none pizza and left beef. <laughs> and so this is what was delivered <laughs> and they put it on the internet. And I think it's a really good representation of A, user research and B, what's going on in the app world right now. So in terms of user research, you might think, wow, users want a pizza delivered. Well, actually, users want to pick what they want. Um, you know, this person did not want cheese and they did not want sauce. And I feel like that's the magic part of a pizza. Holds everything together. It's tasty. It's good. But this user didn't want that. And so in the user research, they probably found that people wanted to select their own items and not have to call in. I'm guessing they didn't know that this would happen. Kind of weird. But my suggestion is, um, you know, letting users customize things is always great. And then, you know, when the cheese and the sauce isn't there and it's not holding things together, it's kind of reflecting some of the stuff that's happening with app tracking in the system these days. Um, not being able to do ads and things like that with some of this new IDFA and ATT and all of these new legislation pieces that are getting brought up and maybe will pass and maybe won't. Um, it's sort of making it a non-freemium left premium situation. It's harder to do targeted ads. Uh, a lot of people aren't opting in on iOS. And so it's kind of tricky. The ads were sort of the cheese and sauce holding everything together. And now as you know, app makers, as app publishers, as marketers, we need to be more creative with the solutions that we're offering. And it can't just be so reliant on ads. I like that analogy. I know where you're going with this, Jenny, but I like that analogy a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, definitely make sure that you are looking at what's going on here in the app world. I always recommend having a multifaceted strategy um, so you could do ads, have a freemium option, but also microtransactions, also a subscription. The more revenue streams you can include, and provide value with each one, the better off you'll be revenue wise and the happier your users will be because they might be able to select a none pizza left beef if that's what they want. Mm, I like that. You know, one of my, I and mean, he was an indie developer, previous guest, he was saying, look, every app should have an ad supported model. And he was just like, look, some of your users ne are never gonna pay. And he has that within his app. So he has a diversified monetization strategy. And I was like, that's very interesting after. And then that's why I love doing this, Jenny, because I get to have different signals from different people telling me the same thing. It is very interesting that you said, hey, look, you know, have all these different revenue streams because you want to diversify. You don't want to just give them take it or leave it type of thing. Right. Well, and then as stuff changes, you know, we don't know what's going to come up next. We don't know what Apple and Google might end up saying or what, you know, different areas might pass in terms of legislation. So you want to be ready. You know, this is what we're looking at right now um, in terms of IDFA and ATT. I don't know what's next. If I did, I would absolutely, you know, use my crystal ball and let, let everyone know. But in lieu of that, it's like, let's be ready for anything. Let's make sure that your app is positioned to be successful in any, you know, regulated market that might change and come up. I love it. I love it. Awesome. I got Excellent. one more. Yes. One more joke for you. Um, okay. okay. Is this so a dad as, joke or you got more jokes in you? I mean, I'm just kind of like, you know, doing some visual ones. And then I have a couple, you know, verbal jokes as well for, you know, the end. So kind of laying Absolutely. the groundwork. Okay, so marketing. Oh, it's so much fun, but it's so much work. And then how to scare a marketer here for the holiday season. You've got the little ghost trying the very best that the ghost can keep saying boo. And then finally, make it go viral. Oh, <laughs> every marketer's panic attack here. Um, you know, there's some sort of special sauce that happens. You can't really calculate it. But I think this goes to say, keep trying, keep getting out there. And then you know what? Eventually one of the things will go viral and you're going to get so many app downloads. I love it. That is funny. Yes. I get scared all the time when clients come to me and like, how do we make it go viral? How do we make it go viral? I'm like, bro. Yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, and the algorithms are changing every day. So what worked yesterday to go viral probably won't work today. Um, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So, Hop to the next one. So if you're looking to get started with some resources uh, to maybe get ready to figure out what your research goals are, I have a couple things on my website. You can scan this nice little dinosaur or just go to JennyKPollock.com. And I've got a SWOT analysis. So you would look at your app or a competitor's app and see what your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. Just a Google sheet. You can make a copy and go to town on that. And then I've also got 100 tokens, which is a prioritization exercise for your app. It's got a couple different uh, line items and you just rank how important they are to you. So that can help you say, oh, wow, it's so important that we have a you know, diversified stream of revenue we should start there. Or maybe it's really important that you get to market fast. And this just kind of helps you decide what's important for you and your team. And then you can kind of use that to figure out what your research goals might be as you dive into user research. Love it. Thank you, Jenny. You don't even ask for an email. So guys, go check it out. And then do me yeah. a favor. Don't go when you guys uh, try to share this with you. You Google is easy. Look, I mean, Google the cheats. You go here and you hit make a copy. Don't ask Jenny to get edible access and all that jazz. I it's the number one like pet beef I have. So when you go to this file, do this, go to file, make a copy, and that's all you gotta do. And it goes onto your Google Drive. Okay. Don't be like, Jenny, I can't do anything with it. It's you only. No, go file, <laughs> make copy. Boom, it's yours. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> totally. There's even instructions on how to do that in here. So you guys should be able to sort oh, it out. Yes. Should be good. <laughs> don't <But> yeah, ask. <laughs> just take, don't ask, just yeah. take it. There's, it's there for yeah. the taking. It's, it's what I want. So uh, definitely where I often start when I'm doing my research, um, user research, you know, what are the strengths, awesome. weaknesses, opportunities really get in there and then decide what those research goals are. Yeah, so check it out right that's awesome thank you for that free gift and then last one here if you guys want to connect with jenny as well here's all of her social Absolutely. it is all linked up into the YouTube description and your favorite podcast app but you know here it is as well one final time Absolutely. just in case you missed the qr code here it is one last time all right I don't know, i'll probably bring it up one more time <laughs> anyways thanks for sharing that jenny all right let of course. me get into it I had a few more people. No, do you mean it's a macro keyboard? Like you can just auto type certain things. But Adrian, good to see you back. I don't know where you went, but good to have you back. Dean, good to see you. I'm trying to think if you're out in Australia or you're in the Europe area. And then George, first time. Hi, Steve, first time live. Well, welcome, first time live. Good to see you as well. All right, Jenny. So we're going to get into our app audit segment of the show. And before we do an app audit, I like to try it off every app audit with some corny dad jokes. Let's get to it. All right. You want to start or you want me to start? Okay. I'll start. Okay. Kind of on theme with Halloween, in, but not really. Uh, how do robots eat okay. guacamole? Oh. With microchips. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> microchips. All right. Guys, if you thought, you know, well, we're playing to donate, but we're, we're both going to donate. Okay. All right. Jenny, uh, which one should I go for? All right. Uh, I'll start with, actually, I'll go with this. Since you had a dinosaur theme for your QR code right here, I'll, I'll stay a giant jar joke as well. Okay. Here we go. What dinosaur is known for riding the bike without a seat? Which one? Megasaurus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Put oh, that's great. Okay. I'm going to combat that with uh, what do. <laughs> Hold on, Jenny. That's just round one. We'll get it. Hold on, Jenny. Save it. Oh. Save it. Save it. Okay. Well, we'll get to round two. We're not going to blow everything all at once. All right. So put J if you thought Jenny's joke was better and put S in the comments if you thought my joke was better. Again, the loser will have to donate. We have to do something embarrassing too, Jenny. So oh. we'll think about that. We're both going to donate, but we should probably do salsa dance or break dance, something that is dance oriented. What do you think? We'll come up with something. Maybe people yes. in the comments could tell us. 
what to do. Yeah, right, I love that. Some User research right here. What do you want to see? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Put it in the and comments. If you want us to take, you want me and my guests to take a look at your app in a future live stream, just go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. And I know a few of the people whose apps we're going to be auditing are here too. So we're going to take a look at David's app first. Here. All right. He wants feedback to be an app flow, but anything that sticks out to you. So it is, looks like a CRM type of app, right? You can manage your contacts, you can track calls, meetings. So it looks like a CRM app to me right off the yeah. bat. Yeah. I agree. I couldn't tell though at first if it was for personal or for professional. So I feel like mm. you can make that a little bit more clear and there's a potential use case where you could target both. Got it. Yeah. He says that is awesome. So you didn't give me any feedback. Organization creates opportunity, never lose a contact. Yeah, that is interesting. Cause is it like a bump type of thing where, you know, you get to keep people's contacts or is it more for business? So say organize in business and grow. So it is for business. I think I'll just jump in for an a, from an ASO perspective. Obviously, you want CRM. It's probably going to be pretty competitive, but you want to put CRM in there. And Jenny, one of the things I've been saying, and I love your take on this because that's why I love doing this, is I, I said this last week just on a whim, kind of talking to a, a past friend of mine. But I said, you know, if I were launching a brand new app today and it was, one, going to be subscription-based, right? And maybe, to your point, have multiple options. Yeah. I we'll almost start with the hard paywall especially as a new app because we've seen pretty good success with the hard paywall meaning no free content and then run some apple search ads that's it like that simple go get it going and then you should get some revenues in and i like to get personally i like to get feedback from people who are engaged or either paying from our app and so it's a great way to figure out like do i need to build these new features because i don't want the freeloaders advice i want the feedback from people who are actually paying me Right. Because long term, that's what you want. You want to have the people who are paying you be happy with the uh, offering that you're providing. So I think that can be good. But after you're out for a while, I would suggest considering a freemium option of some kind, whether that's you can store one contact and test it out, or maybe it's a couple. Uh, the other option is potentially ads and you can pay to get rid of them. So I think down the line, there's an opportunity to get more people in to top a funnel. But when you're starting off, when you're building, I totally agree, Steve. Good. Love it. You don't have to agree, Jenny. I'm okay. I do that. though. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, one other thing I was going to say about the app icon. Um, so I love this right yeah, here okay. where you see the two people. The first one, it felt uh -huh. kind of lonely. It was like, oh, let's let's capture, uh, you know, everyone's mm. information, but it's just one one person. Um, and the other thing I was thinking as I was looking at this app on my phone was maybe consider inverting. So have the icon itself be white, and then the background be that really cool trendy ombre. Yeah, I like it. Stick out I a like little it. bit I more. If, I wonder if he's going off of the other stuff that I'm seeing, like there's one contacts of spot. So like from a out search ads perspective, one of the campaigns that have worked really well for us is bidding after your competitors. And mm -hmm. so here, you know, like CRM might be expensive, super expensive, but if you bid on your competitors, it might be a high max cost per tap, but typically, and this can change, but what we've seen too is Jenny, that sometimes it will actually, the actual, even though your max CP tap, you know, cost per tap is like $9, your actual might be 30 cents to a dollar because I don't know, it's just the algorithm. And so that's why I would rather go after my competitors like HubSpot, Salesforce, Dynamic 365, and just start with Apple search ads, easy campaign to set up, get going, exact match, and then start driving revenues. And then to Jenny's point, model after you start building some of that momentum. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you look at some of the other logos we're seeing here, they're inverted too. Um, so yeah. we've got the bigger color. Yeah, Zoho's got it. And then if you scroll up, there's a few other ones at the top, I think. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Salesforce is the way it currently is, but HubSpot's the other way. And then this uh, in-app purchase mm -hmm. and the CRM one up there. So just something to consider to be more eye-grabbing when someone's looking at their phone with all the apps on there. I like it. I don't have any personal plan. Um, okay, let's get into the app itself. Shall we? We shall. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Track contacts and connections. Never need an opportunity. Feel free to jump in anytime. Okay. All right. So I thought the logo rather than through this part. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. No, I just think you know we've seen stats that if you just ask versus doing the double tap, people there's way more often than just like forcing the double tap. So that's all I was going to say. Absolutely. And then I was going to say, I really like the icons through this um, kind of onboarding piece. I think that's good. Okay. A dummy phone. I need a dummy, a dummy phone for all this stuff. I'm curious to see, David, what is this conversion rate? So I some I don't know what you feel about this, Jenny. Maybe, maybe getting people to add a contact first or just showing this first and foremost is more is more valuable than getting people to actually sign up. Because I feel like there is going to be that drop off, right? And the key metric that I look at, because most people buy during the onboarding process, the key metric is how many people that open the very first time see this paywall. Because if that's not like 90%, then I have a huge... Are you yeah, delayed? Do you want to add it? I, I, there was a little delay there. Delayed. Yes, I think That's maybe it. frozen. But anyway, I missed what you said, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, all I was saying was I want that paywall, first open to paywall view, that funnel, to be close to 90%. I want 90% of people mm -hmm. who are going through my onboarding to see my paywall. Because if that, because he's asking me for to create the user account, and I'm getting, if I'm getting like, less than 50% of people dropping off on that sign up rate, I might switch it and try to show the paywall before I ask them to sign up. Because we have seen that in conversions. If you flip the two, show paywall, then ask them to sign up. We have seen good results with that. Yeah, because you know what you're getting and it's listed out. And I, I think this page is actually really good. I love that there's that most popular flat flag on the mm -hmm. annual. I think that's always a good way. And it does the math for you below, which I thought was great. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of good things about this and it could definitely be beneficial to move it up earlier. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't, I think what you can do is, I think this is fine. I, I, for me, I want to add some social proof to, you know, like just grab something supports a solo developer. I would probably remove that in my opinion, David, because you're a business app, like we're business people. So we want to make sure this app is going to be around and not just something that is a fly by night type of thing. So if you're going to be a CRM, you're targeting business people. I don't want to see solo developer. I want to see big name Salesforce type of thing, especially if you're targeting in my eye. So, and I also feel like the, the trial periods are a little bit too long. Now I'm not very familiar with the CRM space, but I would kind of take a peek at what I like the SWOT analysis that you mentioned, Jenny. Take a look at what trial periods your competitors are doing because one of our they did we we've doubled and now they've gone on to revenues, but we doubled their revenues just by one. They only had the before was just a monthly 30 day trial offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we changed it to yearly seven day trial, monthly no trial. And we immediately double their revenues that next month. And so I think 30 days is a little bit too long, especially if I'm a business person, maybe 14. We have seen okay results with 14, but I think 30 is a little bit too long. Yeah, that sounds like a really good strategy and I could definitely see it working here. Okay, I'm gonna hit X. Cool. Anything you wanna add? Yeah, so I like the colors. I thought it was great. It's playing off of the the initial like app icon. We've got you know the colors from the ombre here at the top. Um, one of the things that we'll see on a different page is that there's some graphs, which I think are really cool. So you can measure your progress. Um, I'm a big fan of if it's not measured, it won't change. Uh, and so I think the graph should consider being the same color as these here, because this is yeah these are the graphs. Mm -hmm. um, that is kind of the only place where it's really colorful when you come in and then as you go out throughout the app it sort of loses the color scheme that it's going with and i'd love to see that infused in here you know one of the things i was going to say is we're dealing with this with a another client too that's more b2b but essentially like 
David, what is that first thing you want users to do that is going to like almost tip the scales in your favor? So for as an example, a workout app that we work with, you know, they're like, if I can get people to work out once, I got them, right? I got them hooked. So for you, maybe it's like that first contact and you want to sort of guide the user to adding that first contact. So you just landed me on a very busy page and I don't know what to do and so if it's that first contact that first task that first activity guide me you know now add your first contact then i just want to be guided okay i'm going to add that contact or if i'm not ready i can x out but this engages the user and then one thing that i'm really missing from this is how do i upgrade again maybe i can't add a contact and you're going to lock me out i can't okay jenny let's see what happens Anything you want to add, Jenny? I think we're good. Okay, great task. Two days. So one of the things <laughs> I noticed right there, um, it said do not count. And it was, for me, it was auto on. Yours doesn't look like it was auto on, but for some reason when I went through and was adding contacts, um, mm -hmm. it was auto saying do not count. And I think it should be auto right. counting, mm -hmm. which is how it's showing up right now. So oh, I'm not cool. sure. Right, right, right. Yeah. For some reason, mine was already checked like that. Maybe it was something to do with my settings or something, but um, I yeah. would assume people want to count their contacts. Uh, that should be the base yeah. entry state. Exactly. Hello. And why does it do not count? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, it seems confusing. Like, it's negative. Like, what, do you want to count it or do you not want to count it? Not do not count. Like, do you not think yeah. it's yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why are you leading, leading with the negative too? Absolutely. Okay. I think that's a good point. And then I always look at, like to see the second open. Okay, yeah, one of the things you're missing here is, look, the top two places that people buy are gonna be during the onboarding, like that's like 60 to 80%. And then number two is the homepage. And I don't see anywhere to upgrade. I only have to go here. So put this pro somewhere on this homepage, David. It should be good. Yeah, you'll see a lot more signups that way. You don't want people wondering how to sign up, how to pay. You want to take that money and you want it to be really easy to take that money. Yeah. It's like go to any website. Would you not see a way to contact pricing? These are like critical things to any website, but yet, you know, on the apps we're like, let's just hide it in the, the footer <laughs> or in the sentence, yeah. right? Like let's just hide it somewhere where nobody's going to see it. So, all right. Anything else on this, Jenny? Nothing else on this part. The all right. Well, let's take a look at the results. Thank you for a few more votes. All right. Miguel, trader. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, thank you. Oh. And Jeremiah says, how about the robot? That's that's an easy one. I could do the robot. Yeah? Yeah, Who's that's good. The it's on theme. Yeah, I like it. Okay. We'll tag each other. Okay. George. Jay. See, I think every they just want to see me do silly things. I think this is just rigged against me. Okay. All right. Let's get into round two. Sounds good. All right, Jenny. So okay. again, I'll give you the choice. You're the guest. You want to start or you want me to start? Uh, I will let you go first for this round. Okay. I'll, I'll try this. Okay. Jenny, did you hear the sad news about 12-inch rulers? No. They're not. They're not making them any longer. Oh, shoot. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but, oh. Okay. <laughs> Well, thanks That's for the good. applause. <laughs> I, I might have to vote for you. I don't know. This is tough. Okay. So I'm going to try and follow that up with what do air conditioners and computers have in common? They're both what? useless when you open windows. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> All right. Jeremiah is here and we're going to take a look at his app. So. Thank you, Jeremiah, for joining live. He's in the comments as well. Let's, let's pull up his app. It is Iron Revival. So kettlebell workout trainer. Oh, I love kettlebells. That's good. Although I don't use it that often. All right, Jeremiah says fantastic. Okay, cool. Maybe you need All this right, app then, Steve. Get it downloaded and you might use your kettlebells more. It is on my phone right now. He did give me a link to check out a workout, but we'll, we'll go through the app as well. All right. Miguel, you, see, I need the first vote to be S. You're you're starting the wrong trend, okay? Oh, I disagree. Right. I think this trend is fantastic. 
All right. So when I'm looking at this page, I think it looks really good. It looks inviting. It looks, you know, kind of like a good hardcore workout. You know, I feel like I could uh, definitely see, you know, this being something uh, that is you. So I, I thought, you know, overall it looked really good up front. Uh, like the icon, like the logo, uh, like a lot of the pictures, it shows exactly what you're doing here, which is great. It's like, okay, I see these, uh, plan your workout in the premium situation. I, I thought that was really good up front in these screenshots. Yeah, I like it too. I'm gonna go through one of the my favorite ASO tools to use for keyword research is called App Follow. And I'm just gonna do some quick little analysis for you, Jeremiah, for ASO, because he wanted feedback on ASO competitive space and overall functionality. So we'll go through the functionality, but with kettlebells, Okay, so you rank pretty well. So that's great, Jeremiah. You're number four in the US for kettlebell. But think through like maybe even moving it to the title versus just putting bells in there. And then let me just do some quick research on the top app. They have a lot of reviews. Go ahead, Jenny. I noticed the other logos are more uh, kettlebell shaped as well. So something to consider there. I don't think it's too far from the current one, but... Uh, you could make that more prominent because you do have it. It's just a bit smaller. I know one of the things that we've seen success with when it comes to screenshots is just like leading with the main keyword, and especially for you, Jeremiah, where you are specifically niche on kettlebells, like lead, make it big, make it bold, you know, the number one kettlebell workout app or hundreds of kettlebell workouts. Like if you love kettlebells, Bells, you'll love this app type of stuff. So like lead with that and maybe add some social proof on like some, I'm sure if you Google scientific results on kettlebell workouts, you can add that on here too, and then get into like hundreds of workouts. And I think what I've learned with the fitness space is maybe even leading with like all fitness levels. It seems like a popular marketing copy for fitness apps. I think that widens your funnel when you do that because you're able to approach people who maybe aren't as serious or maybe they're just getting started and it feels more approachable. And this is definitely an app that would work for a hard paywall. We see niche apps. Somebody who did a, a butt workout app previously on our YouTube live stream, he said, look, we tested hard paywall versus, you know, a soft paywall where people can, there's freemium. He said the hard paywall converted way better. And for my app, we, we have an app of our own. We see hard paywalls. Jenny, we got a 16%, you know, trial activation rate on a hard paywall. When we had to, when we added the X back in, we saw 6%. So a dramatic Ooh. decrease in, you know, 6% is not too bad, but six, it's not 16, you know. 16 so. is way better. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah. And Jeremiah, you like, you can run, again, you can run some Apple search ads targeting some of your competitors too. But yeah, I would go kettlebell. When I look at kettle, it looks like kettlebell workout is the main keyword. Doesn't have a whole lot of traffic. 25 is not a whole lot. But you know what? Kettlebell, kettlebell workout. If you can rank for both, that's what I would do. And then let's look at that Spanish Mexico trick real quick. Still well, it works. So yeah, here have a different title. So this is where my I might go kettlebell two words workout here. And I would just give up the Spanish Mexico and use English. And then in the subtitle, you know, again. Go kettlebell one more time in there. And yeah, like that's how I would do the ASO. Like have kettlebell everywhere that you possibly can. And I like the niche. Like I, if I was doing a fitness app, I would start with the niche versus like, you know, at home workouts. Like, okay, great. How am I going to compete with like Peloton? I'm a big Peloton user, Jenny. That's why I was like, mm. Ah, I see. Okay. So hello. I like this. So I thought this was great looking at the image, asking for the push notification. The contrast is good on this. I can read the text, uh, which can sometimes mm -hmm. be tricky with uh, images, but it's really good. I think there's some like shading and stuff behind the header, which helped with that. So uh, that's really great. It's clear. The only thing I would consider is um, I know red is in the color scheme, but red go was just kind of a little bit backwards on the one that was just back uh, screen goes typically like a green or something like that. So I felt mm. um, a little conflicted there. Like I know it's the color scheme, so I can see leaving it, but I could also see maybe making a little bit more positive or forward motion with a, uh, you know, not a color that means stop typically. Yeah, and I think the only thing I might change is 
ask for. We've seen like engaging with the user, user feedback, right? User research. How new, like, are you familiar with kettlebells? You might just want that Intel, Jeremiah, because one, it increases your conversions, though that's the selfish reason. Two, you get some feedback on like, okay, you know, maybe I need to talk to more of the beginners. And then, you know, like, do you own a kettlebell? You know, like, I don't know, like add a little bit more because I think this is a wasted slide. Like, what's the point of this? I know he wants, and I think maybe even add some, so, blend some social proof together as well. Like, hey, you know, I lost this much weight, kettlebell workouts, blah, blah, blah. During this onboarding, you kind of arm up. What I'm expecting to see is a paywall right now. Shall we see? Hit go. Oh, again, another register. Oh my God, don't do this. Uh, Jeremiah, you don't need to go like, all right, I will do this, but I would remove it. I mean, I have a strong feeling on this, Jenny. Do you disagree or agree? Well, the problem is what if I don't want to hand over my information yet? What if I'm not bought in? So I, I think it's tricky um, in that regard. I, like, I understand. And you want the information, but I think you could get it. You'd have a better chance of getting it after providing value. Because so far right now with this walkthrough, Steve and I haven't got any value. We, we haven't done a workout yet. Yeah. And then like I, I signed up. You don't even have Apple log login. So it sucks even more. But like the paywall, add the paywall, lock it, make it completely. Where do I sign up? Is this completely free, Jeremiah? Come on. Premium. There you go. I think there's a two ninety nine oh, a month. There we go. This should be sooner. Yeah. Yeah. This should be right on paywall. All right, Jeremiah. Yo, here. I will make help you make more money right now. Pay attention. Okay. Show this paywall during the onboarding. Increase your pricing. Literally, look at what your competitors are charging. This is all I did. Okay. We went from one thousand to last month we did twelve thousand dollars a month on this app that we have and all you got to do is like take a peek at this app and figure out how much they're charging and charge very similar and add a trial we have seen that more you know trials increase conversions so add a trial three bucks makes you seem like a crap app in my opinion here let's, let's take a look it's a indie right here too Oh my God, he's doing, oh, we should buy this app. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like I can 10X that revenue. Yeah, look, look at the competitors. They're all undercharging, man. These, this space is for, for the taking. Absolutely, sounds like opportunity to me. If you look at ones that aren't oh. kettlebell, I pay a lot more. I'm sure you're paying plenty for the Peloton. I know I pay for the Down Dog Yoga app. Um, and they got yeah. me on some sort That's of monthly, example. um, annual, there's a monthly option, but I just pay the annual. I'm like, just pay it, forget it. I don't even know how much it is. It's so important to me. It's like, this is what I do. Uh, they actually got me during the pandemic. They were like, Hey, free for everybody since everyone's at home. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that time ended and now I'm paying for it and it's great. I use it all the time. Let's see what Shoot, are you the could do. Here. Look, they do 50. They have so there's you're running a lot of promotions, but 50, 60, like you can increase the price. People are, people know how expensive fitness is. So it's like, and, and it's important to them. And so like, why just charge three bucks? Again, told you we helped the client. They were charging 15 bucks a year, a month, 30 day trial. And I was like, dude, add a yearly we charge 69 now. And then that yearly has a seven day trial. The monthly has no trial. So what I would do for you right now is go like 10 bucks a month. And then shoot, if you want to be cheaper, put like 30, 40 bucks a year, show that, make it hard paywall. You get no free access unless you pay us. And then don't ask for that user sign up until maybe after like, Hey, want to save your progress? Give me your email. Then you can use that email to then, because now that they wouldn't see that page, unless they activate a trial, you can then do a drip campaign on that email campaign being like, Hey, here's our most popular workouts. Boom, 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 done. I know it works. Trust me. You'll thank me later but it will work for you. All right, that's it, Jenny. What about you? <laughs> so I agree with all of that. Looking at this though, um, for the plan your workout in premium, earlier I was commenting on how great the contrast was. Uh, these ones are a little mm -hmm. bit harder to see. And so I would recommend either, oh, yeah. you know, making it darker uh, so you can read it or doing something with the images because it's a little bit difficult. And I found that a couple places throughout the app where the contrast wasn't as strong as it needs to be.
you know, I thought I would be getting some, like, is this a workout? Like, I thought I'd be seeing more workouts. It seems like, I don't know, am I, am I being dumb here? Like, uh, it's a little confusing to set up when I was working on it the other day. Um, I was just testing it out. But one of the other things I've seen in other apps um, is that instead of doing like hitting the plus button all the time to churn up your reps, you could do a slider. It's easier. Think about it. You've got your kettlebells in your hands, mm. your, you know, mid workout or, you know, what have you, you want these buttons to be easy. You want them to be tapping. I know if you tap on the one, there will be a drop down, which is great. Uh, but I think you can make it even a little bit easier with a slider. Yeah, and I, I, I was expecting to see Jeremiah some workouts that, and maybe you did email me that, and that's what the the email is all about. But I was expecting to see some workouts, and I don't see it here, like the workouts. Maybe you have to go premium to see the workouts. But and then the best work of your training, I don't get that too. Like what? Like these? This text is so tiny. Like I don't even know that 12 premium tried and true workouts okay but i didn't know that that's i had to pay for that so i guess he's saying like hey track it for free but if you want the actual workouts but you made it so tiny bro yeah Where's definitely make it easier and careful on the contrast as well um one of the things i would also say is it looks like you can input your own workout um and then there's a note section so to me there's might be even an opportunity to sell to gyms or personal trainers so they can uh, you know partner with you and maybe there's a you know lower rate for the folks that work um you know at that gym or with that trainer so you can get more people in the funnel and then you can put the notes from your coach right on in there too all right anything else on this app on jeremiah's app that's all i've got yep. all right i like it all right jeremiah let me know what happens. Keep me posted. Hopefully you follow it. And then we'll love to have you back on. Maybe share if it worked or not. No, I'm okay if it didn't work. Armando voted for me. Miguel voted for you. George voted for you. Adrian, you. All right. <laughs> the robot it is. <laughs> One more time. You guys got me dancing. Miguel says, if I launch an app with only Apple login to begin with, do you think I'll be leaving a lot of users out? It seems like the easiest path to get users on iOS on a new app. What are your thoughts, Jen? Well, if you're only on Apple, I, I think that's great. If you're going to be on Android, you're going to want to offer that as well. So it depends which uh, app store that you're in. Um, but I do think that for me on Apple, it's a lot easier to just log in with one button. Uh, I don't want to type anything in if I don't have to. Yeah, I'm also you, moving Steve? to Apple versus I'm almost moving to Apple versus Facebook. You know, like when I was always logging with Facebook now, it's just like Apple, Apple, everything's so much easier. So I agree with you. I don't have enough data to say like, if you offer Apple, Google, and Facebook that, you know, if you're on iPhone, 60% are doing Apple. And then, you know, I don't have that type of data, but I think intuitively speaking, it should work. All right, Jenny. Well, do you have any more jokes? I'm, I'm out. I've lost. Maybe I could try to win one, but anything? I've got one last one. So, you know, Steve, I would try and okay. make a pun about this app that we were just looking at, um, but you probably read it before. <laughs> Are you, is it the, a Reddit joke? Or? Yeah, yeah, it is. Definitely yeah. a Reddit right. joke. <laughs> What's a three letter word that starts with gas? Hmm. I don't know. R. Okay, that was all. That's why I saved it for last. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, for us. So, if you want the app SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, what's the O? Opportunities and threats. Threats. So, analysis. example for Great. our kettlebell. For our kettlebell workout, opportunity is to increase that price that we we're talking about. I like it. Strengths, really good info, probably like really good workouts too. Weaknesses, you're not showing the play well on the onboarding. And then threats, you know, like, I don't, I don't know, like maybe it's somebody else watches this and that first person that's winning right now, that's ranked number one, does the same thing as you. That's your threat. Absolutely. <laughs> anyways, Get out there first. <laughs> All right. And then if you want to check out InView, it is in the app. 
called InView as well. And if you go to togetherlabs.com, you can check out togetherlabs.com. And if you want to connect with me, her LinkedIn is linked in, as long as with her Twitter is linked into the YouTube description. And if you're listening on the podcast, well, it is in your favorite podcast app as well. Jenny, the audience wants to connect with you in any other way. Do you want to send them anywhere else? You know, just, I think, LinkedIn, Twitter, and my website. I'm all over the internet, so you'll find me there. It is JennyKPollock.com. Again, that is linked up into the show notes. Jenny, that was an amazing stream. Thank you so much. I will be donating right now after our, our call. I'll put 100 in, and then we'll get it go. Here, here's proof. Awesome. We're going to do this. Gonna, I will match you, Steve. And if this. anyone in the audience wants to donate uh, any amount as well, you can certainly do that. So uh, happy to do that. And I think we also are owed a robot video, a robot dance from you, Steve. So looking I forward know. to that. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> this is very embarrassing. All right. Well, Adrian, thanks. Good to see you back, my man. Thanks, team. Great show. Next week, we're going to have Andy Carvel, I believe his name. He's the co-founder of Fitcher. We're going to talk about the mobile stack, all about retention, monetization, subscription optimization, all that jazz. So it's going to be a great show every Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Jenny, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Thank you for having me and definitely check out next week's uh, Andy's amazing. I got to chat with him at the um, app promotion summit. So tune in next week and check it out. Thanks so much, Steve. Yeah. yeah and we got to meet at the app promotion summit. So go, if you guys, we did. hopefully we'll do some events next year, but app promotion summit's a great event as well. All right. I finally won one. I'm not taking any more votes. So I won one, two, one. How about that? Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> he threw me a pity <laughs> vote. <laughs> Jeremiah says, thanks for your time on our app, Jenny and Steve. You're welcome, Jeremiah. Keep us posted. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys. Too much going.